Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs pregame show presented by Points Bet. Use the promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk free bets up to 2000 bucks. Luke Stuckmeyer, Cody Del Mendo, getting you ready for the big Nationals Cubs game, but really the big story Huge. of the night. Yeah, there was a code red. Jack said we're six minutes late. We're <laughs> right on time, Jack. This is. <laughs> Hey, my on, pants are dry, guys. We're, they were on, in the Cody's CHGO pants bet show. had to fully dry for the yeah. bench show. Yeah. Um, Jack and Jack R were there. They saw. And Jack R knows. Everybody seems to know by this point, the big story of the night is not the game that's coming up that we're going to preview a little bit. The big story is Jason Hayward, uh, it appears, will not play again in a Cubs uniform. Yeah. Jed Hoyer bro- broke the news at Wrigley Field tonight. And, you know, there's just been so many people – so many different views of the Hayward contract and all that. I think most people believe it was time to move on. It was best for both sides. Some people are angry at Hayward, and I've never really been on that train. I mean, he's he was frustrating, no doubt, because like frustrating as a player. Yeah, yes, as a player, no doubt. I mean, the amount of ground balls a second, or yep. you know, soft pop ups to short, whatever. Yes, he was a frustrating player because he was the highest paid player on the team most of his tenure. Um, some people can argue maybe that's why the Ricketts stop, stopped spending after the 2018 season. Um, you can, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to just how much money he made. And in a weird way, like, I don't get it because it's like, it's not our money. But <laughs> when you, right. when you, when you're top, when your top paid players aren't performing, usually the team isn't playing well. And that's in all sports. So, you know, I I get it. Like I I'm not gonna sit here and defend him to the to the brink and say that he was a great cub, but the fact that he was a good dude and did a lot in the community and like every single player that's played with him said he was like the best teammate. So I always compare it to like Milton Bradley. Like no one liked Milton Bradley. No. I know it was only 3 years 30 million, but he was an awful dude. He and was sentenced to 32 months <laughs> in prison. For, yeah, yeah. For beating his wife, threatening his wife. Right, he obviously right. had some that mental was, problems and anger That was problems. after the Cubs, but still like that Right, yeah, but I'm just saying like that for sure. He ma- he made it 1 year of that 3 year deal. And I think the one of the biggest things with Hayward as well is like so I feel like if the Cubs had just got got just got past this earlier, he probably wouldn't be looked at as a villain as much. And I'm not even saying that he is, but there are some fans who are just so over it that like he kind of became a villain, especially this year with how the team is playing and stuff like that. In a way, I felt bad for him, but not that much considering again he's making like 22 million dollars a year. It's hard to feel bad for someone making that kind of money. Yeah. I but, understand that. But again though, like he wasn't the worst cub ever. He wasn't he didn't live up to expectations, but there have been worse players here. Jack R on the chat, I like your comment and that's what I would agree with. This is what I think should be said. It was time, but it shouldn't be a celebration. It it's not really his fault that he didn't turn out to be this great baseball player. Yes, he underperformed the contract. We all understand that. The frustrating part, and I think most people have been really fair in the chat most of the season. There's been a lot of, please stop playing him. Please stop playing him. Other guys deserve his spot. This isn't right for the development of the team moving forward. And the Cubs finally got to that point. Yeah. Uh, I don't, you know, <laughs> a, a, agreed with all of that. At, at some point this season, and maybe even last season, he was taking playing time from guys that deserve to have a shot and would possibly be pieces of the future. Agreed 100%. They're finally making that part right. Don't make him a villain for signing an eight-year, $184 million deal. We all would have signed the contract. Mm -hmm. He worked, tirelessly worked to try and solve it. Like, Mm -hmm. he wanted to be a great baseball player as much as anybody else. There's not a player in the organization that will say a bad word about Jason Hayward. There shouldn't be too many people in the city of Chicago that will say a bad thing about him for what he's done for the community. He didn't turn out to be worth the contract. However, everybody else will say, well, you can't tell the story. The 2016 Cubs without that speech was the very beginning of his contract. I don't know if the Cubs would have won after that speech. Nobody knows. We will never know. They might have won without it, and it would have meant nothing. Yeah. 
All we know is they did win after he, he made the speech. Yeah. So, you know, a better question might be, was the speech worth $184 million to if you're a Cubs fan? I say yes. Actually, actually if that's if, <laughs> if you can actually say that was part of it, why not? Not my $184 million. I would have paid anything if right. I could have done it. And, I mean, I know it's hard for people to just, you know, try to quantify how much defense means, but his outfield defense meant something in that season too. Remember going into 2016, before they signed Hayward, the outfielders were Jorge Soler and and Kyle Schwarber to go with Dexter Fowler. Like, and the big reason they lost in 15 in the NLCS was because of outfield defense. Jason Hayward, if there was anything that he did do right, was just be one of the best outfield def- out, defensive outfielders out there. Again, that doesn't live up. That still doesn't nope. mean he lived up to the nope. contract. Doesn't mean that he was a, the greatest Cub ever. But he did bring value on the defensive fi- the defensive side of the game. And it's just hard for people to really take that into account, saying that this this is why he was worth the money. He definitely wasn't worth the money when it comes to just his defense. I'm just saying that, like, outside of the speech, he did he his outfield defense meant something in that postseason run. And 2020 was 60 games, but he was one of the better players in yeah. 2020. 2019 and as well had 20 homers. Nobody can argue a fact that he was the leader in the clubhouse. And I know they desperately needed a leader. I would like to, you know, I don't know what his future holds for him. Apparently, Jed Hoyer said they're going to let him go out and try and earn a contract somewhere and go play somewhere. When his playing days are done, if it's now, um, I don't know what his future holds. I think he'd be a really good coach. I think he'd be a good manager. I I think he'd be a good front office guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's room for him in the Cubs organization for sure. If And I'm sure that door's been open to him if if he wants to take it. Right. Um, because he's more than just a, a baseball player, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Joey, do we have the actual quote from Jed Hoyer tonight? And it, it was just kind of brought up a couple days ago, and they were worried about the injury. Jed said, I've talked to Jason about this, and he's been such a great pro with us and a leader, and we want to have him around the team this year, but we're not going to have him with the team next year. We've already talked to him about that. We want to give him the full offseason to be able to go out and find an opportunity. And I think for us, Given where we are as a group and where we're going to likely be in the corner outfield next year with Saya and Ian, I think we're going to move in a different direction. Now, he did say likely in the corner outfield spots with Ian and Saya. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a little buzz on Twitter like, did he just guarantee a. No, he said likely. Mm -hmm. He didn't say fully 100%. Ian is a big part of the future, but I think what he's saying, you know, they've, they've finally got to the point too where they realize. It will hurt the development of some of these young players. They're struggling to find out, even with Hayward currently with the knee injury that he's apparently struggling to come back from um, and won't come back from now this season. They're struggling to find the right mix of how much to play some of these guys before next season. Yeah. And so Hayward was just plugging that up, and it, you know it's been going on this season. And that that has been most of the anger on the chat this season. So... Yeah, again, like he he was becoming like a villain because so many people just didn't want to see him play. They wanted to see which wasn't fair to him either. Right, exactly. In my like, eyes, like it, it wasn't fair to Hayward, and it, it, but it is what it is. Like that that's the the one thing I will say is that perhaps the Cubs aren't in this kind of rebuild right now if Jason Hayward actually panned out and lived up to the contract. Maybe. Yeah. Just, I mean, he was what the type of player he was when he came to the Cubs in sixteen was he could get he just got on base. He walked a lot and he just he was able to get on base a lot in terms of hits and walks and and he had occasional power. And when you think about those teams in 18 and 19 and and I guess even 20, what did the what did those teams miss? They had a lack of guys who could get on base. It was a lot of, you know, I don't want to say home run or bust, but a lot of right. a lot of guys were like that, and they they struggled to get a lot of guys on base and then actually come through with a big hit and stuff. Now Hayward had a lot of big hits in his tenure with the Cubs, but there he just didn't just didn't do it enough in in terms of being able to take over that void of after a Ben Zobris left because yeah. the whole thing with his wife and you know hell even being a part of what. This year was if I mean again they're this year is a bad example because the team's not good but they they he definitely came into the season for the team and the th- and the team was thinking 
maybe he can get back to how he played in 2020 or 2019, right. and he just didn't. So, again, I I don't know how much, but if he had lived up to even half of what that contract is worth, maybe the Cubs just aren't in the situation. So there's I give I've given you the pros and the cons of him as a Cub. The the cons definitely is we probably aren't in this situation. And the pros are he's just a good dude. And maybe first of all, I don't think mo- last word on on Hayward. And we'll move on. It, we'll talk about it more in the post game show. I don't think most people were angry with the signing when it happened. Just like Soriano, I think most people thought that's a good signing. Looks like a good move, and most people were happy about it. And it showed that the 2016 Cubs were serious. Yeah, they were serious about taking that next step from 15 and the NLCS. The negative side to it might be maybe they're a little bit uh, gun shy on big contracts now. Maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. We'll find out in the future. It's weird. Um, but hopefully, I'd like to see him get a shot. And I wouldn't mind seeing him get a ring attached to some team and just be like the last guy in the roster. Either way, I wouldn't mind seeing Jason Hayward back with the Cubs. Um, now, part of him not being on the roster is they've also claimed off waivers Fran Mel Reyes from um, the Guardians. That's interesting. 27 years old, negative war this year, but he hit 30 home runs a year ago. Yeah. I've watched a few White Sox games against the Guardians, and, I mean, he has he definitely has the power. He's been bad this year, but um, there's another guy that they're going to try and fit some at-bats in for I this feel, season and see if they can fix him. I don't know how much first base he's played, but I feel like that's where he's going to be playing if he's not a DH. Well, we're going to get to the lineup in just a second, <laughs> and we're already starting to see some of those, again, trying to move guys around. To see if they can figure out at bats for guys, you know. So again, claimed off waivers. He's not thirty yet. Maybe it's a guy you can turn around, develop, and trade. Dare I say another trade off at the end of next year? I'm just saying, you might as well take a shot on him. Do I want to see him getting a ton of at bats compared to Velasquez? No, no, no I don't. No, no. Um, but it it sort of reminds me of the uh, Jackson Frazier signing. Yeah. Right? Similar. Or like a guy even, that had a bright side and hasn't done real well, and let's see if we can help him regather that. Right. Well, it, it's also, remember when the Cubs were kind of in rumors for to trade for Dom Smith? Right, yeah. Like, it's very similar to that. Dom Smith had a he, he had a, a really good 2020, and he's kind of trended down since then. You just said Reyes, 30 home runs last year, yeah. and he just gets DFA'd by the Guardians. Uh, so, it, it's very similar stuff. I, I Again, I don't know – what it means, I don't know where he fits in with this team. But I will say, does bring power, and that's one thing this team has lacked all season if it ain't from Patrick Wisdom on a consistent <laughs> yeah. basis. So, again, I, we'll see. Uh, you know, this year, 69, nice WRC+. Plus, uh, only hitting 213, slugging 350, 254 on base percentage. It's not great. It's not great. Maybe change of scenery. I, who knows? Roll the dice. It's two months. Right. It's not some massive deal that you're signing him to. It's not eight years, 184 even, million. No, even, too early, too soon. <laughs> even though he hit 30 home runs last year with the Guardians, they only had a 1.2 yeah. F4 at, yeah. uh, altogether. Not so a perfect player. He's, yeah, he's definitely. It's not all there. Uh, he's been given a lot of opportunities. Been in the league for five seasons. Uh, who knows? Still, the upside. He's young, and maybe. Cubs player development can help him get back in the right track. We've seen it before. Give it a chance. Uh, Keegan Thompson on the hill tonight. He gets on a ball. Sanchez, uh, he's got to bounce back tonight. You know, it's not, again, it's not just one game that's a result that scares you or one great game that you say is, you got to look at the whole season. And the last start just wasn't a great one for him. Four and two thirds, 10 hits, five earned runs, and two homers against the Cardinals. Now you'd like to see how he responds. Yeah, maybe he was working on something last game. I don't know. Who knows? I, you know, Nationals lineup definitely not nearly what the Cardinals lineup looks no like. No Soto, no Juan Soto. Yeah, no Juan Soto, no Josh Bell. Uh, but again, a major league lineup is a major league lineup. Uh, you know, we saw him shove against the Braves back in June. We've seen we've seen him do it against good teams, the Dodgers in Los Angeles. So, who he's playing really doesn't. It's not really triggering me on what how I think he should perform. But you ideally you're thinking going up against a Nationals team that <laughs> is worse than the Cubs. Yeah. Uh you'd think that a quality star is coming tonight, especially in bounce back, uh trying to bounce back from that star against the Cardinals where really he just wasn't that good at all. Um 
So, yeah, I, you know, I still think there's a bright future for him here. I've gotten in arguments with people on social media who think that he is still just a reliever or just not good, and I, I yeah, quite I literally don't understand it. Like, not every starter is perfect in every start. Like, he is a young pitcher who is going through the motions. He went from quite literally being a middle reliever, multiple inning reliever, to a, a starter who has – straight up put himself in the running to be in the middle of that starting rotation next year. There's there's a lot to like for him. And the fact that, and we've talked about before, the fact that he has in, in, in developed pitches as the season has gone on. So, Impressive. Uh, we're going to see how he finish out, finishes out the season. I am interested to see how many innings uh, he gets the rest of the season just because I mean, it's a lost season. Why would the Cubs push how many innings he gets? So, uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out here in the last two months. Uh, tonight's lineup, again, we've been talking about how really for uh, Grandpa Rossi, the toughest deal the next two months is going to be trying to figure out how do you get the right amount of at-bats for each guy yeah. uh, so you can see where the development's at. Ortega's playing tonight, Contreras is catching, then Hap Suzuki. Patrick Wisdom, this is one of the ways to get some of those infield guys some different activity. He's over at first base, and so that allows Velasquez to DH, Madrigal to play second, and Morell, who's back, apparently the hamstring is okay, and he'll be over at third. So you'll start to see more versatility. You'll, you'll see, could Patrick Wisdom be your first baseman next year? Which is, you know, they've got guys that can play third base. He yeah. plays a good third base, but if you could find him at first base, I think most people think that, you know, Hayward – being, being told Hayward is done playing and seeing uh, Andrelton Simmons get DFA'd and VR get DFA'd, I don't know how long Frank Schwindel will be on this team. I don't know if it'll be the rest of the season or not, um, but that's probably a name to kind of keep an eye on as they try to figure out if bats for guys and you see someone like Wisdom starting to play first base. Uh, Higgins can play a little first base. Um, the only Another it's interesting. Name, another name with that is Rafael Ortega. The thing about oh, yeah, Rafael, for sure. The the thing about Rafael Ortega is like he's not playing bad enough to get DFA'd. Like that's what bothers me that they weren't able to move him at the deadline. And he's someone that I would like that to me it's like someone that at the very least you move in like what the Dixon Machado trade was with the Giants. Like yeah. he's probably worth more than that, but still like with Ortega on this roster, it's 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 a it's a log jam for you know these outfielders and 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 Narcissio Crook is in in Iowa and has been killing the ball like he's been great there and if Ortega wasn't on this roster he'd probably be here but or if he wasn't left-handed yeah, he wouldn't that, be here that, at all that's true and the left-handed thing I, I get it from in a certain extent but and I'm and at this point in the season like when does that really matter whenever we're what. 20 games under. only the only in our race to 63 I guess but I guess. otherwise it does not matter at all basically my point is is the only <laughs> the only name yeah. in this lineup that I'm upset to see is Rafael Ortega and again it has nothing to do with him as the player it has nothing to do with him even batting leadoff because at least he has a high walk rate I just I would rather see a different outfielder up in this lineup you know what I mean yeah so, I, I, I but agree at least they're you. playing Velasquez and Morel I know Madger I, it's good I, I'm 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 not back in on Magical, but he has had some good swings uh, over the weekend. He had two hits the other day. What on Friday? Um, yeah, and he had one on Sunday, I believe. Did he have one? No, on he Sunday? had three hits in the series. Okay, I I honestly didn't watch one inning of, from the weekend. We hit, I just listened to the radio. I believe he had a hit in the ninth inning, bottom okay. of the ninth. Um, All right. So how yeah, about, how about bets, Cody? What do you got for us tonight? Anything hot? You usually like to bet on uh, Keegan Thompson. I do, but I'm not betting on Keegan Thompson. Oh, I, oh, I do like oh. the four and a half strikeouts. Okay. You want to well, take the overall low. four and a half? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I against do. this Nationals I, team, I yeah. hope he has four and a half strikeouts. Yeah. yeah. Maybe so, I should wager that. Hmm. Yeah, ooh. Well, time. you're wearing your points bet shirt. I am. Dude. He's wearing it because it's the best way to support CHGO. And so, because I'm over 60% in my wagers. Yeah, we just got a lot of a lot of moving parts here. It's a, it's a well-oiled machine here. Uh, so, like I said, <laughs> points bet is the best way to support CHGO. 
And when you download the Points Bet app and use code CHGO when you sign up, if you do that right now, you get two risk free bets up to $2,000. But that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first time deposit, you receive a free CHGO membership which unlocks all of our web content. You even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO Locker. That's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO Locker, all for making more than a $50 first-time deposit at PointsBet. I know we got a lot of White Sox fans who somehow sometimes decide to tune in here just so they can troll in the comments. We got a new Dylan C shirt. It actually gives me a lot of pain because he should be a Cub and he should be in the Cy Young race uh-huh. with, with the Cubs, but that is what it is. So if, if any of you, uh, Paul, your good name, if you're out there, if you haven't seen the Dylan C shirt, you should go get that shirt. If you sign up for points bet, deposit $50, you get the free membership, and you can get that shirt. I'm just saying, if you haven't done it, it's a great deal. You know who should get the shirt? Naked HDXYZ. <laughs> you wouldn't be naked anymore. You'd have a shirt to wear. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. You're naked. We've got the solution, a new White Sox shirt. Yeah, there you go. So if you have any questions... If you have any questions, you can email pointsbet at allchgo.com. We'll help you out. Your home, your home for live and play betting just got even better. See an edge in the game you're watching is your favorite team prime for a comeback. Don't just watch the game. Bet along with it live. More live betting, more live markets, and faster live cash outs. Follow along with your bets the moment they hit and stay in the live action all game long. Download the PointsBet app right now and use promo code CHGO. So what are you waiting for? It's time to elevate your live betting game. Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER for crisis counseling and referral services. All right, it is Star Wars night out at Wrigley Field. Uh, looks like the rain is finally slowed down. At two days of basically rain. Somehow they got the game in yesterday. Uh, let's do who you got. And by the way, we haven't updated the standings, but I don't want to brag. I have won three in a row. For- three in a row, I haven't to be even added to I the towel. I don't even think I put a, a put one you out didn't, there. You I didn't. Was, you have failed to participate. <laughs> okay, you've had a lot going on. So fifteen, you or you've won three in a row. That I won. Yeah, that I got three more you, wins. That puts you at fifteen. So I have sixteen. You have fifteen. Oh, oh, oh. Ryan has so tonight I could tie for you, the lead. You can yes, Woo. and Corey and Kevin have one. So Jared and, and even Joey still out. Hmm. I'm interested who. And then who Joey's going to start picking when he does when he's our producer because he was always like Hayward no matter what. Yeah, he forgot to put it on here, but I do have Joey down for Hayward tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm still picking Hayward. I, maybe he'll get a pinch hit appearance. Not one VR, of these days. you're going to go for Hayward? No, Hayward. <laughs> maybe Ortega. Maybe I'll mix in some Ortegas. Uh, all right, so I'm going with Ian Happ. Okay. Uh, I want to see a nice second half for him. He's um, one for four with a hit against the Anibal Sanchez for the Nationals. So. Ryan went with Nico Horner because he looks like Mark Hamill slash Luke Skywalker okay. on Star Wars night. I like and it. also he's been, you know, arguably the Cubs' best player this <laughs> yeah. season. Hit three hits on Saturday, yeah. right? So yeah, so that's not that bold, but okay. So Ryan's going Nico, and you're going Velasquez, huh? Yeah, uh, you know, I want to get a little – because I was out for three days, not not leave, leaving my picks, you know, I'm getting a little weird here. Uh, Velasquez, I just you, the more he plays, I feel like the more comfortable he's getting. Uh, I could be completely wrong about that, but again, he's a DH tonight, so he's gonna be focused mainly on hitting, and that's it. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to see what he does, and against this Nationals lineup uh, or Nationals pitching staff, I feel like he has a good opportunity here. That's what I'm rolling with. All right, Cubs Nationals. It's Star Wars night at Wrigley Field. We'll probably see Darth Vader. We'll see the Stormtroopers. Some, probably some Baby Yoda at the ballpark probably tonight. Maybe a Wookiee or two. And uh, hopefully a Cubs win. And, again, development from the young guys. That's what we're really looking for. And we'll probably talk more about the Hayward stuff in uh, this game. Yeah. We're going to talk about Hayward. We'll talk about some of the minor league guys. We'll talk about the future. Uh, who might be DFA'd next, like all, all of it. We'll, we'll have fun on the post-game show. Hope you'll join us for that uh, right after the final out. We'll do a full hour. <laughs> Till then, thanks for dropping in to check out the CHGO Cubs pregame show presented by PointsBet. Fly the W. May the force be with you. And Luke, Chewbacca. you are my father.